The Gemara says in Sukkah, Tanya, we learned that the Baraisa Rabbi Eliezer teaches, just like a person cannot be yoitz on the first day of Yom Tov of Sukkot with somebody else's lulav, as the Pasuk says, Ulekachtam lechem ayoyim arishen priyets hadar kapois tomorrow, so it needs to be yours. So too, a person is not yoitz with somebody else's sukkah because the Pasuk says, Chaga sukkah is tasa lecha shivas yomim, which teaches us the sukkah needs to be yours. The Chachamim argue and say, even though it's true that a person cannot be yoitz on the first day of Yom Tov with somebody else's lulav, but you could be yoitz with someone else's sukkah because the Pasuk says, Ka lo ezrach bi Yisroel yeshvu besukkah, which teaches us that all the Yidin could technically be sitting in one sukkah. So clearly it does not have to be your own personal sukkah. So the Gemara asks, so what do they do with the word lechad that says by sukkahs? The Gemara answers that that's coming to exclude a stolen sukkah. But if it's borrowed, well the Pasek says kol ezra, which clearly tells us all Yidin could be sitting in the same sukkah. The Allah in fact is like the Chachamim, that even though one is not Yoitz on the first day of Yom Tov of sukkahs, with borrowed Dalad Minim, because it needs to be Lochem, but with sukkah, it's different, and you are yoitzah with a borrowed sukkah. Now, as we learned the Gemara simply, it sounds like the reason why the Chachamim hold that you could be yoitzah with a borrowed sukkah is because this limud, what we learn from Kala Ezra B. Yisrael, that all Yidin could be sitting in one sukkah, is teaching us that when it says ta'asa lecha, by sukkahs, does not mean that it has to be yours, it's just telling us that it shouldn't be stolen. However, when we look at the way the al Rebbe explains it, what the al Rebbe says is, Afopi, even though the Torah says, Chag HaSukkah is Ta'asa Lecha, that you need it, it needs, to be, it needs to be yours. The Sukkah needs to belong to you, and not someone else's. Nevertheless, says the al Rebbe, a person is Yoitza with a borrowed Sukkah, because since you, when you went into it with permission, it's as if it's yours. And the only reason why the Pasuk says Lecha by Sukkah is, is only to tell us that you're not allowed to have a stolen sukkah, from which we see clearly that also by sukkah we're learning from the word lecha, that it needs to be yours. And nevertheless, we are yoitza with a borrowed sukkah, because as the al Rebbe puts it, when it's borrowed, it's as if it's yours. So we need to understand, if the reason we're yoitza with a borrowed sukkah is not because of the Pasa Kala Ezra is coming to add, the idea of a sha'ula borrowed sukkah, but rather when it's borrowed, it's as if it's yours. Why should a borrowed lulav also not be kosher for the same reason? If it's borrowed, it's as if it's yours. So l'cha'ayra seemingly we could try to answer that really within the gedder, within the definition of shaloi that it belongs to you, there is room for differences, different levels to what extent it's yours. And by sukkah, the Pasukala Ezra is coming to teach us that even if it's not completely yours, it's also good enough. In other words, that even if it's borrowed, that would be fine, even though it's not completely like yours. Whereas by Lulav, where we don't have this extra Pasuk, so then when the Pasuk says, lachem, it actually has to be yours completely, and therefore it cannot be borrowed. However, the Rebbe says, when we look at the wording of the Al Rebbe a little bit further and a further seif, it sounds like, quite obvious, that by sukkah, when it's borrowed, it's completely actually like yours. This is what the Al Rebbe says. The Al Rebbe says, even though by the ever the person can be yoitzah with a stolen sukkah that's standing on the ground, nevertheless, lechat a person should not be sitting in a sukkah that's on his friend's land, because it's not considered shaloi mamish, it's not completely like yours. And the Torah says, Ta'asa lecha, that it actually has to be yours. Says the Alter Rebbe, and this is not similar to the case of borrowing. Because when you're borrowing something with someone's permission, it's kishaloi mamish, it's completely like yours. What do we see from here? That with the borrowed sukkah yoyotze, not because, as we said before, it's good enough even if it's not mamish like yours, it's good enough it's on, if it's on a lower level, but rather, as the al Rebbe puts it, when it's borrowed, it's completely like yours. So we're back to the original question, why is it then that by the Dalad Minim, we are not able to use the borrowed Dalad Minim? Says the Rebbe, so we could say that actually what we're learning from Kola Ezra is the other way around. Not that by sukkah it's good enough even if it's not completely yours. 
But rather what we're learning is that sukkah has a special get there. There's something special by sukkah that as a result of that, when you borrow something, it becomes completely, completely like yours. And the explanation says that Rebbe in, in simply is, since when you're borrowing a sukkah, it's like the way you live somewhere the whole year round. That's what you're borrowing the sukkah for, to be able to actually live in it. That's the whole gather of what the sukkah on Yom Tov of sukkahs is. Different to lulav, where in lulav, it's about, I need to be yoytze the mitzvah of lulav, and it's, there's a condition, there's one detail that also has to be mine. But when I'm living somewhere, I'm living in my house. So therefore, when I'm borrowing it, when I'm borrowing the sukkah, it's also in the same way that it's with this idea in mind that it becomes completely like my place, the place where I'm living. Says the Rebbe, to add to this and to make it even more geschmack, we'll understand based on Pnimi Yisroi Yonim. From the Pasa Kol Yisroel, Kol Ezrach Bi Yisroel, as we said before, we learn that all Yidin are Ru'uyim Leishe B'Sukkah Achas, all Yidin can be sitting in one sukkah. That is... That because of the very, very special great mile of sukkah, there is something that causes a tremendous unity amongst Yidin that call Yisrael ru'uyim leishe b'sukachas. Says the Rebbe, it's because of this reason that by sukkah, even if we borrow it, it's going to be considered completely like ours. How is that? Why is that? So the Rebbe says, it's explained in Chassidus on the Pasuk that says regarding Rosh Hashanah, we say, Bakese le yoim chagenu. The Pasuk simply means on the designated day, we're going to blow shoifer, etc. But we also translate Bakese le yoim chagenu that those things that are Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur were Bakese, Kese from the word of being hidden and concealed. The inyanim that happen on Rosh Hashanah and more in a concealed way come out on chagenu, on sukkois, in a more revealed way. And based on this, we're going to understand the difference in regards to the lochem between sukkah, the difference between sukkah and lulav, whether we are being, well, we would be yoytza with a borrowed sukkah or lulav, but by first explaining the ideas of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, what happens on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur in a more concealed way, and how do these things express themselves on sukkah, is through sukkah and lulav and so on. So the Rebbe says, we discussed already in the past at length, in regards to the ideas of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that there's really in each of them three concepts, three ideas, one higher than the next. Number one, says the Rebbe, is the mitzvah sayoim. There is the specific special mitzvah of the particular day. On Rosh Hashanah, of course, we have the mitzvah of Tkiyat Shoifar, and Yom Kippur, we fast, we have to do the mitzvah of Tshuva, there's the mitzvah of Vidui. So those are the mitzvahs of these two days. Then we have that both Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are part of Aseres Yemei Tshuva. Now Tshuva we know is higher than mitzvahs. This is why it could actually be misakin, it could fix up something that we have missed out in our avoid of mitzvahs. Then we have number three. The very essence of what these days are, which is really even higher than Tshuva. And each one of these, what are they? Rosh Hashanah, there's the fact that Hashem asks us, and then we do the avoid of tam lichuni aleichem, of crowning Hashem as Melech, and Yom Kippur, there's the concept of itzum meishol yoy mechaper, the very essence of the day brings kapara. In other words, higher than just the tshuva and the kapara that is a result of the tshuva, there's the itzum meishol yoy, the very essence of the day that carries, that brings atonement with it. Now, these three ideas are actually expressing three different ways in the iskashrus and the bond and the unity between Yidin and Hashem. The first way is that Yidin are kavayochel, a separate metzius from Hashem, and they need to connect themselves to Hashem. Now, in, when we're speaking about on this level, that means there is something that we need to do to connect us, we are going to be doing the mitzvahs. Yidin are accepting themselves the oil malchus shamayim. We're going to accept the gzeirei samelach. That means we are two separate things. We're going to do something to bring us closer together. Then the Rebbe says, there is something even deeper than that. There is the inner bond between Hashem and the Yidin, which is not dependent on the fulfillment of mitzvahs. And this is expressed through the idea of tshuva. That even if Chas V'Shalom Ayyid has removed from himself the oil Malchus Shamayim, 
even if a Yid Chaz V'Sholoim went against the mitzvahs of Hashem, now that he regrets it, and he is doing tshuva for it, so this is able to correct this connection that he had. Nevertheless, says the Rebbe, even this way of this connection, which is higher and deeper than mitzvahs, because it could even correct what we have do- done wrong in our avoid of mitzvahs, nevertheless, it's still in some way tied down and connected to the fulfillment of mitzvahs. That means we are regretting and we're doing tshuva for the fact that we didn't fulfill the mitzvahs of Hashem. And we are being machlit, we're taking that resolution that from now on, we are going to do what Hashem wants us to do. Says the Rebbe, since even this connection is still expressing, it's being expressed in this achlota, in this decision that I'm going to be listening to the Hashem, that means that here we're still dealing with the way a yid is something separate from Hashem and he is going to listen and connect, obey Hashem and connect to, and connect to Hashem. Then, says the Rebbe, we come to stage number three. The highest way of Iskashros is where Yidin and Hashem are Kulachad or one. Yidin are, in essence, one Kavayachal with Hashem. Says the Rebbe, this connection is expressed in the request that Hashem asks of us, and we go ahead and do the avoida of Tamlichuni Aleichem, of making Hashem as king, our king. That means we are being Mo'ida, we are arousing, we are affecting that Hashem should become our king. Why is this expressing even a deeper iskashrus? That means, the Rebbe explains like this, the iskashrus of Yidin, with Hashem through Torah and mitzvahs, or even through tshuva, means after we have already accepted Hashem as Melech, then there is the idea that we need to listen, we need to obey the king, we do tshuva if we did not do what we were supposed to, and that's going to connect us with the king. However, says the Rebbe, before Hashem, even, so to speak, becomes the Melech, before we accomplish Tam Lichuni Aleichem, what is causing that the Yidin are lacking, they're wanting, they're needing this idea of Melucha, and as a result of that, they're asking Hashem, they're begging Hashem to become our Melech. This is because they are in essence one with Hashem, and therefore they cannot remain Chas V'Shalem, they cannot be without a Melech. In other words, here we got to a level that's deeper than the bond between of Torah and mitzvahs. We're going to the very essence of the Yid and Hashem. Says the Rebbe, based on this, we'll also understand that in regards to mitzvahs, there are differences between one Yid and the next in the way they fulfill them. And so too, although to a lesser measure, there's going to be differences in regards to tshuva. Whereas it, when it comes to the idea of Tam Lichuni Aleichem, there's going to be no differences between one Yid and the next. As we see clearly when it comes to crowning a human king, that when, by the hachtorah, by the coronation, which comes from the bitul, from the nullification of the people to the melech, at that point, the greatest officer, the greatest minister, is standing with the same bitul as the ish poshet, as the simple person. Not like after the coronation, and after the king is already making decrees, where here there's going to be many differences between the different people in the country, of how they're fulfilling the decrees and so on. And the Rebbe explains, when it comes to the fulfillment of mitzvahs, since the quality of the iskashras is in a way that the Yidin, as they stand as a separate entity to Hashem, they are now connecting with Hashem, therefore the fulfillment of mitzvahs and the Kabbalah's oil by each and every person is going to be according to his own personal individual level as a mitzvah, as an individual person. Even in Avoidas HaTshuva, says the Rebbe, which is coming from a deeper bond, it's not happening through actually doing mitzvahs. In fact, we're trying to fix up what we have done wrong. So you don't have as much the difference between one Yid and the next. And as we know, that you could achieve the idea of Tshuva even with a hit or Tshuva in one moment, with one little thought. Nevertheless, says the Rebbe, even here there are certain differences. Because at the end of the day, Sof Kol Sof, the Tshuva is going to be relative to the Averis that were done. Or, the Rebbe says, as we know, tshuva means going up to your source. And again, different people are coming from different levels, different places. However, when it comes to Tam Lichuni Aleichem, since, as we said, this idea of crowning Hashem as king is coming from the place where Yidin are in their very essence, one with Hashem. So just like you cannot make any separations between Yidin and Hashem, so too there cannot be any separations and differences between one Yid and the next. 
in the way they are being connected and tied together. In other words, at this point, all the Yidin are like one etzim, like one essence, where there's absolutely no division. Says the Rebbe, even though more specifically we just said that all of these three ideas we have, both in Rosh Hashanah and in Yom Kippur, however, says the Rebbe, in a more specific or more revealed way, we see that each one of these three levels that we just spoke about are connected with one of the three main Yomim Toivim, in Chaydish Tishrei, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. So again, the three things we spoke about was the idea of Tamlichuni Aleichem, making Hashem as king. There's the idea of Tshuva, and there's the idea of Mitzvahs. So the Rebbe says, Rosh Hashanah, what's standing in a revealed way, being the head of the year, that's the time we're crowning Hashem as our Melech. And like Rabbi Sad Yagoin writes, that the first idea of Mitzvahs Hayoyim B'Shoifer is the fact that we're crowning Hashem as our Melech. So that's the main focus of Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur, the revealed the main point of Rosh Hashanah, is the idea that it's Yom Kates, Mechilo Slicha, it's the time where we're doing tshuva for transgressing, for violating the mitzvahs of the Melech. Furthermore, says the Rebbe, even though we said before there's the idea of the very essence of the day brings Kapara, which brings out a much deeper iskashas between Yidin and Hashem, which is even more than tshuva, but nevertheless, the general idea still it's still the point of Kapara, as the day itself is called, Yoim Hakipurim. So it's still associated with Kapara, Tshuva, etc. So again, Rosh Hashanah is crowning Hashem is Melech, Yom Kippur is Tshuva. What is Sukkot? Sukkot says that this is the time when Yidin in a revealed way are being involved in mitzvahs, fulfilling mitzvahs. Sukkot, taking the Dalit Minim, etc., as Chazal put it, there are sukkim be mitzvahs. We're involved in mitzvahs from right after Yom Kippur. We're getting involved in all sorts of mitzvahs. And this is what we call it. We call it Chag HaSukkah. Sukkah is being that mitzvah that we're involved with in this Yom Tif. So now, after we establish what these three Yom Tovim are, these three levels, says the Rebbe, since we just said before that all of the Yom of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, which are hidden, are coming out in a revealed way, Liyom Chagenu on Sukkot, so the Rebbe is now saying that even though we just said Sukkot is primarily the idea of being involved in mitzvahs, nevertheless, we're also going to have in Sukkot, in a more expressed and revealed way, all three things. Also those of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And the Rebbe explains. Just like we said in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, there is the essence of the day. And there is the idea of tshuva, as we said before. There is both the essence of the day, and each one of them is also in, in connected with tshuva. There, as the Chazal tell us, Asaru Yomim Shemayin Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippurim. That means both Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are part of Aseris Yimei Tshuva. But at the same time, we also said there is the essence of the day, which is even higher than the union of tshuva, which is in the Aseris Hayomim. So again, we have the two things: we have the tshuva aspect, and we have the essence of the day. And then there is the third aspect, which we said there is the particular mitzvahs of the day. Says the Rebbe, the same thing we find in the Pasuk in regards to Sukkot. The Pasuk describing the Sukkot says, Bachamisha osar yoim lachoydish ashvi yazeh chag ha Sukkot shivas yomim lashem. So the way the Torah describes the seven day yomtiv is, a, is a, the, the yomtiv of Sukkot. Another Pasuk, chag ha Sukkot tasa lacho shivas yomim. And so too when it comes to actually sitting in the Sukkot, basukkot is teishvu shivas yomim. Now, it's not describing anything specific on its own what these days are. We're being told these are the seven days that we need to be having this Yom Tov of Sukkot and so being sitting in the Sukkot. So what do we see from all of this? That if we want to know what the essence of this Yom Tov is, the essence of this Yom Tov is the idea of Sukkot. Now, when it comes to the Dalad Minim, here the Pasuk says, Ulekachtem lochem beyoyim arishoyim. Priates other. On that first day of this Yom Tov, we just described before as the main thing of the Yom Tov is Sukkot. So on the first day of this Yom Tov Sukkot, you need to fulfill the particular mitzvah of the Dalad Minim. What do we see from this? That the mitzvah of the Dalad Minim, that's not the essence of what this day is, of the first day of Sukkot, of this Yom Tov. The essence of the Yom Tov is Sukkot. And on this day, there's a particular mitzvah that we need to do. Then, after the mitzvah of Natila's Dalad Minim, the Pasa goes on and tells us another thing. Usmachtem lefnei Hashem elekeichem. We now need to go ahead and rejoice. We need to have this union of Simcha for seven days. This is the mitzvah of Simcha of Chag HaSukkot. Says the Rebbe, based on what we explained before, we now understand that the very essence of that achdus that we said that he didn't have with Hashem 
in the way that they're kulacha, they're all one, which our Rosh Hashanah, we said, is expressed through the idea of tam lichuni aleichem. We're now going to see all these three things on Sukkot. So the very essence of the, de- of, the, of, the, of the unity between Yidin and Hashem, that's expressed in the idea of Sukkot, in the very essence of the Siyam and the essence of this, uh, this mitzvah, the Yidin of Sukkot. The next point, the idea of Tshuva, which is really all about Yom Kippur, this is going to be mainly expressed in the idea of Lulav. And then the connection that we said that happens between a Yid and Hashem through mitzvahs, this is going to be expressed in the idea of Simcha that we have on Sukkot. How so? Says the Rebbe says the explanation is like this. As we discussed earlier, in the idea of Tam Lichuni Aleichem, there's going to be no differences, no separations between one Yid and the next. On Sukkot, we see this clearly in the mitzvah of Sukkot. What did we say earlier? Kol Yisrael, Ru'im, Leishem, Sukkah, Akas, all Yidin could be sitting in the same sukkah without any differences, without any differentiation between one and the next. Everyone is fitting to sit together, to duru, to live together in the same sukkah. So that's number one. Number two, when it comes to the idea of lulav, the Medrash says, on the pasuk, lakachtem lachem b'yoyim arishin. Says the Medrash, what's this pasuk referring to? We have Yidin and Goyim that the Abishter is judging on Yom Kippur. And we're not necessarily sure who was the one that actually came out victorious. How, how are people supposed to see who really came out victorious after Yom Kippur? The Abishta says, tells the Eden, go out with your lulavim in your hands, like holding up a banner. Everyone should know that you were the ones that were zoicha bedinda, you were the ones that were victorious. In other words, the tshuva, the kapara of Yom Kippur, how is that expressed on Sukkot? In the mitzvah of until as dalad minim. And finally, says the Rebbe, the idea of the simcha of the Yom Tif, which is the simcha shal mitzvah, this is about revealing that bond that Yidin have with the Abishter through fulfillment of mitzvahs, which brings out a simcha by the Yidin, they're rejoicing in the mitzvahs of Hashem. So here we have these three general things we spoke about before all being expressed in Sukkot. The Rebbe now brings us back to the difference we said about sukkah and lulav in regarding, in regarding a borrowed sukkah or lulav. Says the Rebbe like this, since the whole point of sukkah itself is the revelation, as we said before, of what? Of tam lichuni aleichem. Of the way Yidin are one with Hashem. The unity of Yidin, it's understood that here you can't have separations between one Yidin and the next. In other words, the idea that we said, call Yisrael, Ru'uyim, Leishem, Besukah, Achaz, that all Yidin could sit together in one Sukkah means that because of the special quality of Sukkah, all Yidin are standing in the real, truest Achdus. It's not even like two people that are uniting with each other, but rather as their Kulachad, as they are one essence. And therefore the Halacha will be that even a borrowed Sukkah is Mamish, as if it's my own. Kishaloi Mamish. Because the whole idea of sukkah is about the unity of all yidin that we are, are all one. So you can never separate one yid from the next and say that it's not mine, it's the other person's and I only borrowed it and so on and so forth. If that's the case, so why is it by a stolen sukkah, wouldn't that work? So the Rebbe says, because when you're stealing a sukkah, you yourself are basically opposing and contradicting the achdus of the sukkah. When you're taking something away from somebody else, you are causing a separation in the achdus of sukkah. That sukkah is supposed to be achieving between me and the other person. And therefore it can't be called shaloi. But that's only true, says the Rebbe, by the sukkah. That's that ultimate achdus. Whereas by the Dalad Minim, even though they also bring out the Achdus of Yidin, we connect all four different types of Yidin together as it's known. Nevertheless, the Achdus is still in a, re- in a way that they remain as separate categories, separate species, even after we tie them all together. Because the mitzvah of Dalad Minim, what's that corresponding to? And that's what's that revealing in the Avoidus we spoke before? The Kapara of Yom Kippur. And we said that just like in the Kaparo, there are differences between one Yid and the next. Because even though it's true that in the very deepest part of the Kaparo and Shuba, we said, is higher than division. But the Kaparo practically is going to be based by, by every person according to his own Indian. So therefore the Achdus that comes out, that expresses this, which we said is the Dalad Minim, is also going to be in a way where each one remains separate. And therefore, when we say that we borrow Dalad Minim, you can't say it's mamish like yours, because at the end of the day, by Dalad Minim, each person does remain a separate Metzius from the other. Says the Rebbe, now we can understand that why by Sukkah, 
The Rebbe says another thing. By Sukkah it says, the word Lecha, you should make the Sukkah's Lecha, Beloshin Yochid. But a Dalad Minim, the Limud, is from the word Shel and Lochem, which is in the plural. Why is that? Because by Sukkah, the Yidin are so much, one entity, one Metzius, Keguf Echad, so that it's one person, you speak Beloshin Yochid, you speak in singular. You speak Lecha. Where is by the Dalad Minim, where each person actually remain something separate, you're just tying them together. That's why we use the term lachem, because it's a rabbim, it's, it's many people together. Nevertheless, of course, even in the Dalad Minim, we still, still need to have the idea of achdos. The whole point is that we do bring them together and we tie all the Dalad Minim together. So that's, again, corresponding to the, the Dalad Minim, corresponding to the union of tshuva. And finally, says the Rebbe, comes the third idea of sukkahs, which is the idea of simcha, which expresses the iskashas that the Abishta has with Yidin, through mitzvahs. And therefore here there's going to be much more differences between the different categories of Yidin, as we know in regards to the simcha that took place. By simcha's Beis HaSheva, we say with the Hasidim, the Anshim so were dancing, and all the rest of the people, the men, women, and children, all came to see and to listen.